Hey friends, in this video I'm covering the character and paragraph panels. You'll probably use these the most when working in Adobe InDesign. Here is the character panel. The shortcut to bringing this up is Command T. The first drop down is to choose your typeface. The second drop down is where you can choose all the different weights within that typeface. There are two ways to change your typeface. If you have your text box selected, it will change everything inside. If you select part of the text, you can change just the selection. Also, when you highlight text, both the character and paragraph panel options appear in the top toolbar. They are identical, so use whichever you find easiest. So let's say you want to make specific words italic. Highlighting each word is a pain, so I suggest using the eyedropper tool in your main toolbar on the left, or the shortcut is I. Regarding shortcuts, you cannot be in a text box because then it will just type it out. This is usually used to select color, but it also allows you to select text styling. Initially, the eyedropper will show empty and face left. You can sample the styling you want by clicking the text. The eyedropper will then have some ink and face right. From here, you can highlight specific words and your life is so much easier. Next in the character panel is your point size on the left and then the letting on the right. Same thing, you can change the point size for the entire text box or specific parts. I am very much a person that uses a lot of shortcuts and there is a shortcut to adjust these. For point size, hold Command and Shift and then tap either the greater than or the less than arrows depending if you want to increase or decrease. Note that the change jumps in multiples of two but I still find this faster than clicking back and forth. For your letting, select multiple lines, hold Option, and then press the up or down arrows. This also changes in multiples of two. There is an additional shortcut, which is hold Command and Option, and then the up or down keys. This now jumps in multiples of 10. In the next row of the panel, you have kerning and tracking. I don't use these at all. I also urge you to do this manually so that you have full control. I'll change the text because this doesn't really need to be kerned. For kerning, place the cursor in between two letters, hold Option, and then press the left or right arrows depending on the direction you want to move the letter. This is jumping in increments of 20, which is wild. To change this, go to InDesign, Preferences, Units and Increments, and then you can change where it says 20. I usually change this to one, again, for flexibility. If I kern now, it'll go in increments of one. If you add command to your shortcut, so now you're holding Option, Command, and then the left or right arrows, it will now jump in increments of five. When it comes to tracking, the shortcuts are the same, but instead you highlight the entire word or line. I don't usually use the rest of the character panel. The first one is to stretch your type vertically, and the second is to stretch it horizontally, both of which you should not be doing. In the next row, this one is for the baseline shift, and you can go up or down. The last drop down here is to slant your type, which you should also not be doing. Instead, use a true italic or an oblique font. In this panel, we also have the top right drop down, which has some additional options all caps, small caps, superscript, subscript, underline, and strike through. I do use these, just not here. All of them exist in the top toolbar next to your point size and letting. Regarding all caps, there are two features in InDesign, which I'll cover again when I do the type drop down video. Let's duplicate this real quick. First, let's use all caps in the character panel. For the other one, go to type, change case, and then you can choose uppercase, lowercase. Title case capitalizes the first letter of each word. This does not follow proper capitalization. In this case, you wouldn't capitalize and. Sentence case will change the first letter to uppercase. Cool. For now, I'm gonna choose uppercase because I wanna show you the difference. The styling looks the same, but they function differently. The all caps in the character panel takes precedence over changing the case in the dropdown. For the right, you can still change it, like so. On the left, no matter which you choose, it will not change. Also, if you remove all caps, it will follow the last selection you made. Okay, underlines. The shortcut for underlining your text is Command-Shift-U. This is the default. If you highlight your text, go to the dropdown and choose underline options. 
you want preview toggled on so you can see or rather kind of see what's happening. I say kind of see because it stays highlighted and it can be hard to see. Here you can change the weight of the stroke. You can move the stroke down with the offset drop down. You can also change the color. Unfortunately, you can't add swatches, so you would have to make sure the swatch was added before you did this. There is another way to use the underline feature. I'll highlight some text, go back to the underline options. This time, I want it super thick. I'll change the color first. Now you can kind of see the full underline. For the offset, you can actually set it to a negative value to move it up. Click OK, and now you have a background color, but using the underline tool. And if you want to eye drop this, you can. The shortcut for the paragraph panel is Command Option T. This top row is all of your alignments. Then we have options for left and right indents for an entire paragraph. Do people do that? I don't know, but that's what those do. This next one is your first line indent for a paragraph. I'll select a group of paragraphs, and if we change this to P9, it will only indent the first line. The option on the right indents the last line, which I haven't found a use case for that. These next features, your life might change. Let's add a subhead to our text, and maybe we want some space in between the two. The amount of designers that I've seen use a hard return and then change the point size. People, this is just not a way to live. The next two options are your space before and space after. The point of these is that you don't have to use an entire line of space, you can control it. I'll duplicate the text box. On the left, you can add nine points as a space before to the paragraph, or you can do nine points as a space after to the subhead. Both will be styled the same, how wonderful and painless. You can also control the space in between paragraphs with the next drop down, but I don't know who does that. Now we have our drop cap option, select your paragraph and just go up. This is going up by one and that refers to how many lines. I have three, so the drop cap in our text takes up three lines of text. Most often you'll see the drop cap crash into or come close to the rest of the text. To fix this, place your cursor just after the drop cap in that top line and then kern to the right. Shortcut reminder for kerning, option and right arrow, or option command and right arrow if you need bigger movements. Next to the drop cap, this includes additional letters. I've never set type like this, so I don't use it, but it's there. There are shading and border options for the text box here, but I would recommend using the swatches panel like a civilized member of society. At the bottom, you can toggle hyphenation on and off. It should be off unless you're typesetting flush justified text, which then hyphenation will help you fix some rivers. Last on the bottom right, this toggles aligning or not aligning your text to the baseline grid. Here I have some text. I'll turn on the baseline grid. The first way to do this is go to view, show grids and guides, and then show the baseline grid. Or you can use a shortcut, which is option, command, and apostrophe. If we now toggle between the alignments, it will shift the baselines of our text to follow the grid or not. All right, in the paragraph panel dropdown, I only use one option, which is single line composer. I don't technically know what that means, but I know what it does. I'll keep it on Paragraph Composer for now, and let's try to rag some text. I'll bring his down. You can see immediately that everything starts to shift. I'll undo and change it to Single Line Composer. Now, when we rag our text, it shifts line by line, giving you much more control. Note that I'm using Soft Returns, which is just Shift and Return. Those are the features for the character and paragraph panels. In part three, I will cover the Swatches panel and working with color. 